Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage, on a misty, overcast Friday afternoon. But in the shop, it's always sunny and 70. <laughs> I took a pause working on this 9-inch Ford rear end that I'm building for my 49 Chevrolet pickup because I'm in a bad spot. But it just creates opportunities to find new ways to solve your problems. So let's catch you up. I was waiting after the first video on my axle tube. I bought a three and a quarter OD by 36 inch long. I believe it's 211 wall thickness, pretty thick. All the specs are written on it. 219, I guess. And I bought 36 inches of it. I had done some rough figuring that I'd either have a little bit left over or I would just go ahead and push it into the tube and it will live in here and allow me the opportunity to weld on the inside. That's exactly what I did. So I cut it direct, directly in the middle, 18 inch per tube with my goal from my center line of being 28 and a half inches on both sides. The tube itself didn't match up with my early big Ford housing ends. These are made for a three inch tube and would have been a butt weld against those. That's how most housing ends are. They're beveled and you they absolutely just butt weld up against the end of your axle tube. Well, I got looking at it and obviously it wouldn't butt against a three and a quarter tube, but it wouldn't fit over it either. So I went ahead and machined this area here. So now it fits inside the tube. It's definitely uh, a precision fit. Time will tell when I actually get the jig in there if it's too close. So a lot of times you have to make up for errors in the tube. That's why you weld the housing ends on last. So, so that is one obstacle. No big deal. Then it came to the other end. And my housing, get stuff out of the way here, is three and a quarter inside in theory. However, it's not quite round. It has a welded seam. And it is three and a quarter ID this way on the weld. But opposite that, is about 10 thousandths less than that. So I had to make this rig. I love making tools. This was just a hunk of aluminum. I put it uh, an indentation that my steady rest will fit in and this fits inside the tube. It's tight. You get the idea. It allows me to chuck it in the lathe and I went ahead and cut it almost four inches, just a few thousandths off the tube. And I was trial fitting it in the housing. And this is where my trouble began. <laughs> it started to drop down in. It's only tight, about three quarters of an inch of band here. And then it opens up inside. So it's tight right here, if you can see my fingers. And it started in almost by hand. Because I didn't want it sloppy. But... When I cut this one, I'm gonna give myself a little more clearance because now it's stopped right there. I need to go to here. So I have two and seven eighths of an inch left to push it in there. So I tried tapping on it with a rubber hammer and that's working, but I think I'm going to, and I have to credit my buddy Charlie with this. He called right in the middle of it and he says, why don't you put it in your big press if it'll fit, and I think Currently, it'll still fit in my press. The whole axle won't fit. That's why when I cut this one in the lathe, I need to make sure it's a slip fit. Don't be fooled when it starts to go in. Also, because this is not able to be adjusted very well, I gotta be really careful not to push it in too far, because then I'll be forced to find a way to get it back out a little bit. And also, when I get this half in, 
I probably will definitely need to go ahead and put the fixture, the jig fixture in, the housing narrowing fixture, and at least tack weld this side if I'm going to be working on the other side. I don't want this one to move. Mostly don't want it to get shoved in anymore. So uh, That's next. Uh, I did go ahead and put four housing studs in. My method of installation is I use my wheel stud installer. It's nothing but a baron with a like a 5 8 hole in the middle. I just put a smaller washer on it, uh, set it on the opening, and I had already sanded the opening with my Milwaukee M18 sander just to give it a good finish or a better finish. And with the washers and the baron, you don't hurt the finish on this at all. And I just put four in. That allowed me to put the dog bone in so I could measure my 28 and a half inches that I need this end to be. Here to here needs to be 28 and a half, building a 57 inch centered housing. And uh, we'll have to repeat on the other side. When I go to put the jig in, these four studs will also be sufficient to locate that. A few other trinkets have floated in. I have two different style of spring perches. Not sure which one I'm gonna use or which one I like better, however, the 49 Chevy has the axle flipped, so now the rear axle housing is on top of the leaf spring, and there's not a lot of room between the top of the housing and the frame. I probably have four inches of travel before it's gonna hit the bump stop, which is fine, but if you look at the two perches, this one sits lower. Normally I'd be all over this one because the more you jack the housing off the spring, the lower the vehicle's gonna sit, but this thing already sits perfectly low the way it is due to the fact the rear end's been flipped up on top of the leaf spring and the front has a Nova clip welded on it. And uh, while I don't necessarily love the quality of the workmanship, the ride height was definitely nailed on that one. I have several sets of U-bolts also out for delivery any minute now. And I went ahead and bought some spring plates for the bottom. Uh, I don't believe I could even build these for what they cost. I think they were $33. I don't have any quarter inch flat bob by like five inches wide in stock, so I'd have to buy some. And these are nice, everything's punched. It gives you locations. I'm gonna use a center one, but you can move the rear end forward and backward by moving the uh, spring plates in the perch. This perch has three holes as well. This one only had oh, three really large ones, but the center one will be the one of choice. So in theory, you can move the rear end back and forth on the spring. I like to use it the way it's intended, right in the middle. I may also use these to go ahead and make my own traction bar. They're raw metal. They just in, invite you to go ahead and modify. I bought both half inch and 9 16 U-bolts. Now this truck doesn't need 916s U-bolts, but uh, if this doesn't get them, something else will. Obviously the bigger the better, but half inch is the norm in most of your Camaro Novas, you know, this half ton truck. 916s is usually saved for three quarter and one ton stuff, but just remember it's an option because you buy a U-bolt by length and by diameter of the axle tube, and if you specify a 916 U-bolt, the math has been done and it still fits tight over here. It just takes up more room everywhere else. Hope that makes sense. I still haven't done anything underneath to improve the looks of the housing or to install the drain plug. It would just be in the way doing what I'm doing now. But before I final weld everything, while the jig is still in there, you want to add any accessories you want to add to your housing except for maybe some little bolts here and there but anything that may stretch and move the housing and the order of progression even though I've kind of done things a little different the axle ends are last so the housing ends and that allows you to move stuff around again typically they're butt welded so my experiment where everything's pretty precision in a perfect world this is going to line up with the jig because everything's so nice, uh, 
the possibility exists that I may fight with it because I have everything so tight. Everything's machine fit. So that remains to be seen. The early big Ford brakes that I have, drum brakes, like I said, they've been sitting around more than they've been used. They have been used slightly, I'm sure. One wheel cylinder was carefully capped off and it's perfectly usable. I'm sure the brake fluid in it is fine. The other end didn't have a cap and it's kind of rusty looking. So for the money, I went ahead and bought wheel cylinders. There's a number cast into the factory ones that I was able to cross-reference. And these appear to be correct. They're Dorman. Uh, you flip the box over, they're made in China, so. It is what it is, I guess. Uh, $12. Hopefully they're uh, usable. So now you're up to speed, mid-project on the housing build. for 9 inch. 62-ish inches wide, a 57 inch housing. So my axles, I have shipping confirmation on those. Those are gonna be here Monday or Tuesday. So this is Friday. If I manage to get this put together this weekend, or early next week, I hopefully in the next video, this thing will be all together. I've already, I think I've chosen what center section I'm gonna run. Those are all built or I may have enough parts to build another one. Uh, depending on the ratio. So the one I have ready to go is a 360 ratio, which is about perfect for what I believe the intended powertrain is going to be in the 49 Chevrolet pickup. Most of me wants to put an LS 480E in about a 355, 360 geared 9 inch. 350, 360. 355 is a Dodge. That's my LS Dodge. 355 rear gear with a 30 inch tire is perfect for cruising for everything. Once in a while, I look at the amount of small blocks I got kicking around, and I could just put a small block and a turbo 400 in it. I mean, it's a lot more work to do the LS, but I believe, I mean, I, all I gotta do is go out and drive the Dodge and I won't change my mind, but. In the shop, looking around at junk sitting here, I said, wow, if I just threw that motor in that truck, I wouldn't be tripping over it anymore. But Again, we'll worry about that when the time comes. I'm supposed to be working on the body, and here I am building a rear end, so who knows? One more thing before you go, I want to show you my outer press now that I'm pretty much done with it. I couldn't help myself. I had it all cleaned up and in position and decided it needed a paint job, and I happened to have some uh, Hunter Green Rust-Oleum. I had a quart, and I brushed it on. If you, ha if you had smell-o-vision, you'd smell how wonderful it smells. I enjoy it, actually. Probably not good for you, but my factory one, the spinning plate, had tan paint on it to match it, so... I did the same. And down bottom, before I bought the Abba Press, the day before, at Walmart of all places, I bought these loaf trays, and they fit in there like they were made for it. That's it. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.